Hi everybody, Miss Melinda here. You're a spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's metaphysicalservices.com. Here to bring us part three in my series on ancestor veneration designed to assist you with building your ancestor connection from scratch from a universalist perspective so that you can plug it in to any spiritual or religious beliefs or any magical or spiritual practices that you may have. You can also use these tools and techniques as a stand alone process. So if you haven't seen videos one and two, please go back and watch those where we discuss all of the foundations of beginning this practice. Here in video three, we're gonna talk about who to contact. What ancestors should I contact? How do I know who to make contact with? Do I have to have a relationship with a specific ancestor? What do I do? These are very common questions that people have when they are considering the beginning of their relationship to their ancestors. So firstly, you do not have to contact specific ancestors if you don't have an idea of who you want to contact or you don't have a specific relationship with an individual. Instead, you can decide to honor your ancestors as a whole or to honor your bloodline as a whole, as a group. There are a couple of different ways that you can do that. One way is to write down all of the names and dates of birth of your ancestors going back as far as you're comfortable with and to read out those names and those dates of birth when making your prayers of gratitude. Another way is to have that list and simply keep it on your altar. Another way is to not have a list and to just generally address your ancestors as a group. You don't have to call out any names. You don't have to be specific. You can simply state that you are addressing your ancestors. Now, on the other hand, if you do have a specific ancestor that you would like to make a relationship with or that you had a very close connection to when they were alive, then you can begin there. That's a great starting place for you, especially if you had a really strong connection and particularly if that connection has continued after they have passed on. In other words, if you have received signs from them, such as in dreams, um, in them popping up in your thoughts unexpectedly, you thinking of them often. These are all signs that the connection with that particular ancestor continues and that they wish to continue a relationship with you. Now, some things to take into consideration when developing a relationship with an ancestor that you knew when they were alive, if they haven't been deceased for very long, then they haven't had a lot of time to begin their process of spiritual evolution. Typically, this is going to take a few years, even up to five or 10 years. So it's okay to start your relationship with them by venerating them because they're the ones that you are comfortable with and you are connected to, but you should not expect that they are going to be able to give you a lot in return because they are on their own soul's path. They are going through a spiritual evolution of their own and they have obligations that they need to fulfill within that spiritual evolution. The point of contacting our ancestors, one of the points of contacting our ancestors is the core belief that they are, we are all going through spiritual evolution and that the connection between the living and the ancestors is an important part of the process of spiritual evolution. That we are entering a reciprocal relationship where we are assisting one another with spiritual evolution. What does spiritual evolution mean in this context? It means the evolution of our souls, the evolution in our journey the evolution of growth, of spiritual growth and enlightenment. So when our ancestors have gone through a certain amount of spiritual evolution, they are more likely to be able to provide us with higher quality of guidance, higher quality of assistance, right? Those who have not been passed on for very long 
aren't going to be very, very likely to intervene in our lives in big ways, but they may be likely to offer us guidance, especially pertaining to what they were interested in or what their personality was like when they were alive. There are a lot of things to take into consideration within this concept. So not all ancestors, not all souls, not all souls that were humans are going to go through the same kind of spiritual evolution. Some spirits are going to become much more evolved than others. We're all at different um, levels of our evolutionary process. So some of our ancestors may be quite evolved. Some of them may not be. Some of them may have already been on the path of evolution to an, a more extreme extent when they were alive. Others may be just beginning their path of spiritual evolution. So there's going to be quite a difference in their energy and what they can and cannot offer us. And the only way that we're going to find that out is through building these relationships with them, through seeing who presents themselves and what they want to offer us, and keeping an attitude of humility and keeping an attitude of pure intention towards spiritual evolution and keeping an open mind throughout the process. But a general rule to go by is that if you know of ancestors that were alive at the same time as you who have now passed on, you shouldn't expect too much from them other than what they would have offered you when they were alive. So if Aunt Bertha was excellent at providing you with advice on relationships, then she would be an ancestor to go to for relationships, for example. Now, a lot of people have concerns that their ancestors were not good people and that they don't want to be associated with ancestors who were not good people. So there are a lot of things to consider in that context. Um, one way that you could consider this is by understanding that the whole point of Continuing a relationship with those who passed on rests in the core belief that we are all going through a process of spiritual evolution. What a spirit did when they were alive is not necessarily anything similar to what they are like or what they would do now that they have passed on. Being spirits who incarnate as humans and who are going through an evolutionary process means that we have a role to play while we're here on earth. We stick to a script to a certain extent and we act out those actions that we have agreed to act out to a certain extent. When we pass on, it doesn't mean that we are that same person. So that's something to take into consideration. Another thing to take into consideration is that this is a reciprocal relationship where we are assisting them with their spiritual evolution as well as them assisting us with our spiritual evolution. Within that context, we have the ability to assist them with healing. We have the ability to assist them with growth. We're providing them with clarity. We're providing them with light. We're providing them with energy and offerings that assist them with continuing to evolve as spirits. There is a core belief that we have a responsibility to do so and that we have the power to do so. So we also have the power to heal those ancestral ties. We have the power to heal those events, those characteristics, those ugly aspects that we may not be proud of, that we may not want to be associated with. That being said, if there's somebody that you knew that was living at the same time as you and you know they were a horrible person, perhaps they even did horrible things to you, you are not obligated to interact with them if you feel that you don't want to, right? So there's a lot of different perspectives to consider within this and some of this is definitely spiritual paradox. This is just a very brief and very well-rounded um, 
synopsis of how you can think about this relationship, how you can think about these concepts, and what you will choose to do for yourself in creating your relationship with your ancestors. But keep in mind also, not all of them may be available to you. So even some of those ancestors that you may want to have a further connection with or that you had a connection with when they were alive, they may not now be available to you because they also have a soul's journey that they are on as part of their spiritual evolution. Whereas some of our ancestors may have an obligation to assist us directly or be a certain kind of guide to us, others may have an obligation to be elsewhere doing other things. So take these things into consideration when determining how you would like to go about your relationship with your ancestors. Stay blessed.